Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Putting, putting others first is a big part, if, if a challenging part, of what uh, Christ calls us to as we follow him. Almost all the New Testament writers talk about uh, doing this sort of thing. Service means putting aside our plans sometimes and our wishes and caring more about what someone else needs or wants. It often means sacrificing some of our time or our plans. Well, during the next three weeks, we'll be looking at uh, different perspectives from the New Testament on serving others. And this week, we're listening to the disciple Jesus loved, the Apostle John. Uh, John wrote the Gospel of John. He also wrote three epistles or letters, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and the Revelation of John. So there's lots of material to work with. For instance, Jesus, um, John is the only gospel writer to tell the powerful story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet, which if you're wondering why we were singing that song, that's why. Um, John's gospel is really the most personal gospel, um, including more one-on-one -on -one conversations between individuals and Jesus and more deep dives than the other gospel accounts, which is why it makes sense that John talks about serving others from a personal perspective. So our gospel lesson is talking about how Jesus personally serves. The epistle from 1 John is more talking about how you and I, how we ought to serve. In both cases, John is really very personal um, he wants us in, in this, that he wants us to start with the work and person of Jesus, the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. That, that's the beginning. That's the start point for Christians. It's, it's also our foundation and, and our motivation for Christian service because we see Jesus putting our needs uh, ahead of his own comfort, ahead of even his own life. You know, as we think about Jesus, it, it's, we're getting closer to Christmas, and we think about the incarnation, God becoming a human being, and that means that Jesus not only uh, decided he was willing to ha have diapers put on him as an infant, but later that he was willing to have our sins, our dirt, and our spiritual grime put on him as he goes to the cross. God has taken care of us, and so that means we can now take care of others. You know, in, in airplane, in the airplane safety protocol, they always tell you every time to put your mask, the oxygen mask on first if there's an emergency, before you put somebody else's oxygen mask on, right? Because if you don't put your oxygen mask on and you're not getting air in, you're not going to be helping anybody. Um, if you, uh, it's typically easier for people to serve when they have security. Well, uh, we are in for, we're in luck there because Jesus has promised that he'll take care of our whole lives if we dare to trust him. Like a good shepherd, we just read that he, he watches over us. He, he, he says he's going to make sure that we have what we need and that we're protected from harm, especially eternal harm. And it's a lot easier to love when we have experienced God's love so deeply. In fact, I think the more we experience God's love, it becomes easier and easier for us to love others. Uh, uh, and, well, of course, we're reminded in the gospel passage that Jesus is not only concerned about us, it's, it's personal in that he loves each of us, but it's not only about us as persons or people, but it's about others as well, that he's the savior of the world, and he's not content simply to take care of you and me. He's reaching out to the rest of his sheep, people that he cared for, cares for, and died for as well. Shifting from, that was the gospel lesson, or the, yeah, the gospel lesson, shifting to 1 John chapter 4, John makes another strong connection between service and love. 1 John chapter 4 has got more love in it than the word love is there more often than any other chapter of the Bible. And uh, the first verse of our reading starts off kind of right where we left off in John's gospel. Our definition of love is, is based on Jesus. And it's also, it's not purely emotion-based. 
Um, it's not just a feeling. Rather, love is really defined by Jesus laying down his life, a sacrificial life, or sacrificial love, and, and his laying down of his life covering over all our guilt, all our sins, with his loyal love and redemption. And so if we ever want to give thanks to God and honor his name, it's just as important as singing praises or confessing our sins uh, is loving others. You know, we know, we learn that we, we can't really pay God back for everything he's done for us. And he, he doesn't want us to. But what he does want is he, he does want the, this, that love and, and, and mercy and compassion uh, that we see in, in our Savior, we see in the scriptures. He wants that. He wants us to carry that on. He wants us to honor his name, to live out uh, by having the same sort of attitude and actions uh, towards others. And he doesn't leave us alone in this. The good news is God says that when we're struggling with anything, including struggling loving others, he gives us his Holy Spirit. We can ask for his help, and uh, he, he will, in fact, help us to give us good and uh, gifts when we ask for them. Um, love, as I said earlier, it's, it's personal, and John's gospel really draws that out. And in this case, it's personal in that if you love God, then it follows, John says, that you're going to love people, too. Christian love, it's not just a philosophical love. It's a personal love. John makes it quite clear here. He says, whoever hates his brother is a liar. You can't say, I love God, but then be all about hate for others. It just doesn't, it, it doesn't work that way. Hatred and bitterness is really the opposite of what Jesus stands for. God's love is personal, so it's since it's personal, it's about people and persons. So if we truly love God, then we, we work on showing that love for others. But if you're like me, and I know you all are, uh, in, in some ways we're sinners, I must confess that sometimes I harbor bitterness, envy, and anger towards others. While I say that I love God, I'm not always charitable when I'm stressed out by the, the holidays. When I'm waiting in long lines, I'm not always giving off positive vibe. Sometimes I, I allow uh, my busyness or stress to affect my patience with those around me, especially my family. I'm not always as loving as I should be. Now, I want others to be patient with me. I want them to love me even though I make mistakes, but I'm not always as ready as I should be to give that kind of love to others. And as we look at the love God wants and the love he gives, it's easy, if we're honest with ourselves, to realize that we fall short. Even as we try to love others, we see that we are sinners. We need God's forgiveness as well as help because we can't do it on our own. But the good news that John even tells us in his epistle lesson that it's not about living up to a standard. There, there is a goal we should be living for, um, but... The Lord knows that we fall short because John gave us that great confession that we say quite often in church, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Uh, this is early in 1 John. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we are comforted by the fact that when we confess our sins, our God forgives us. There's no fear in love, John says, and I think what he means is... Um, Fear, he said, well, he says, fear has to do with punishment. The man who fears is not made perfect in love. Well, we don't have to fear anymore because we've been forgiven. And if we ever do fear, sometimes we probably do, the good news is we can just come confess our sins and God's forgiveness uh, can address our fear. Service, um, again, uh, service is personal in another way uh, as we kind of wrap things up in application because it's, it's about helping people. Not, and this gets back to the punishment or kind of a me first kind of attitude. It's not really about me accomplishing something. It's not about me doing good works that earn holy points. Uh, and I think that's really freeing too for Christians as we serve. So, so when we serve others, we don't have to be worried about how good am I doing or how many points have I built up in God's eyes. Instead, we can just focus on others. We know we're imperfect. We know we aren't going to do a perfect job. But we live by faith, by grace, by forgiveness. Um, and so we can just focus on helping the other person because God's going to take care of us. You know, at times when we serve others, we 
might get uncomfortable. There are times when we serve and we feel like we don't get the recognition we deserve. Um, but, but if we really are trying to focus on others, then it's not quite as important how much recognition we get. Uh, what matters really is helping the other person. The focus is not on, and there's not a um, pressure on me to look good or uh, to make sure I get enough gratitude or recognition simply about helping others. If a person, if another person is helped, well then, praise be to God, the goal has been met. You know, service is about love. And love and, and service is its own reward. It's a way, among other things, for God's will to be done, for his kingdom to come, for this world to simply be a better place. And, and making other people's lives a little bit better. And this Advent, uh, may we be reminded uh, throughout it of, of our Lord's great love and service for us. And we pray that his Holy Spirit would lead us to love and serve others as well. In Jesus' name, amen.